It's time for the 1430 Connection on 1430 WNAV and 99.9 FM. Spotlighting news, newsmakers, and important community issues. Now, with this week's edition of the 1430 Connection, here is WNAV news anchor Donna Cole. Welcome to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. In the studio with me is Charlie Gishler. He's spokesperson for the Maryland State Highway Administration. Welcome back, Charlie. Welcome. It is the season to talk about a bunch of road stuff, right? Oh my gosh, isn't it always the season to talk about a bunch of road stuff? Okay, let's get right to it. We've got a lot of topics to cover, but since this is closest to us, let's talk Severn River Bridge and where we're at. Okay, where we're at right now, making tremendous progress. Of course, you know what we're trying to do here and what we're going to do is take these two bridges. There are two structures there. We're making them one, which will eliminate the need of that center median, which is going to free up the necessary space to give us four 11-foot lanes. Uh, Right now, what we're at is we're dealing with the three existing lanes, and they have been narrowed to 11-foot lanes. That is in its final configuration. And when I say that, I mean they're probably going to come through and resurface all that. But right now, a lot of people are, are kind of like in this narrow... Uh, yeah, very th- uncomfortable narrow. And, and, yeah. and it, what that is, it's going to take a little bit of getting used to, a little familiarization with the way to travel through that. But once everything gets uh, you know opened up again and the equipment gets out of there and the cones get out of there, they're going to feel a lot better. Okay, so go slowly. We're going to take how many lanes? We, we're going to be adding a fourth lane eastbound on that bridge. And so westbound doesn't change. No. You're taking two bridges yep. and making them one. One Does bridge. Does that mean there's currently a space in the middle of mm-hmm. the bridges yep. that goes down to the water? Yep. Well, now uh, I think we have it planked up. We did a lot of this work out of the customer's view, our drivers out there. We, uh, we've been doing it from barge, mm-hmm. and we're going to shore that up. That actually makes it a very strong structure as well. That center median that's there right now will be gone. Okay. And that's going to give us... Now, we'll have a divider still, obviously, right. but it's going to give us space to add that, that fourth 11-foot lane in there. So these are not going to be more narrow lanes than what we had before what you're seeing right there now is what is going to be there you're just going to have an extra uh, extra lane okay so yeah, it is yeah. a little bit uncomfortable and yeah. you say this is something you get it, used to it's a familiarity thing we, we've done this before where we have you know we don't have real estate all over the place anymore you know so we have to make do what we have and sometimes if you have these 12 foot lanes uh, you can get them down to 11 foot lanes uh-huh. we, you know we deal with the federal you know requirements and guidelines and everything but it just takes the drivers a little bit of time and i mean i've been there right there with you uh and it, it is you know a little 18 bit 18 wheeler on both sides yeah you know so it's kind of one of those oh geez i can't wait till i get off here but as soon as that gets done and people get familiar with driving that the beachgoers the regular commuters the truckers everybody um it'll be it'll be a lot better okay so you take the federal guidelines is that say 11 feet and is that, acceptable yeah it's plenty is that the most narrow you can go i is, think you can go a little more narrow on don't. certain types yeah, of roads don't. no on certain <laughs> roads on okay. you know like like not obviously not on an interstate or a u.s route there were no hammers there before no. for speeding tickets there are now it's temporary it, it what this is um is our automated work zone safety that is an extremely tight work area as you can imagine i mean you're just talking about the drivers imagine crews on either side just separated yeah, yeah. by barrels you know and what we need people to do is drive the speed limit through there in fact slow down if you can um, probably have no choice in that because it gets, gets busy there but right. keep an eye out for our crews there, again it, it, this happens every year in a work zone we have somebody that gets lost okay. you know whether it's a contractor or whatever and it's just tragic some people going to work and they get hit by cars because people are texting and they're going too fast and everything that's why that's there and if you go 12 miles an hour over the speed limit you, you could get a citation now as soon as the project is finished that'll be uh, packed away and as soon as the project is finished what's the eta by Memorial Day, we'll have all those lanes open, ready to roll. Ready to roll yep. for Getting one of the biggest the travel. Yes, be, exactly. Yep. Travel seasons heading eastbound to the ocean. We have a lot of good stuff that our customers are going to love. You know, going to the heading east, now, not necessarily to the beach, just maybe getting across the bridge, going down toward the other towns, east in Cambridge, all the way down Salisbury, or if you're going to Delaware. Uh, and speaking of which, 404. Yep. Tell me, mm-hmm. there has been exciting news. Oh, uh, yeah. You know. <laughs> 18 months to widen 11.3 miles of a roadway is pretty incredible. You know, it, our Secretary of Transportation, Pete Ron, that was his vision. He got a bunch of the stakeholders together. We had three different contractors working 24 hours a day, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Um, and we did it all summer. Last year, our little slogan, if you will, is this is the worst summer you're going to have on 404. After that, it's good. Mm-hmm. Anecdotally, friends of mine taking it, getting from uh, Denton. You know, a couple of them live in Denton right. from 50 to Denton, no time anymore. And anybody that remembers that 
two lane section of roadway. Oh, in the yeah. middle. I mean, it could take you an hour. And if right. somebody broke down or if I had a crash or something, then it's hours. Going up 301 northbound, we know yeah. that Delaware is doing yes. a huge project. Huge. And yeah. that's a, uh, basically a shortcut through to 95. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think you can. Yeah, uh, yeah. Did that slow down our 301 traffic in Maryland or did we um, have any issues with that? You know, I heard from some people that as you got closer to the line during construction, uh-huh. there was some backups. But our, our section of 301 is, is good to go once you get from the 50 split all the way up toward the Delaware line. It's it's it, Now, that being said, we have some projects going on. We're replacing a few structurally deficient bridges in Queen Anne's County and one in Kent County. So it'd be like northbound 301 over 290. 290 connects in both Kent County and Queen Anne's County. And then Red Branch Run, Red Lion Run, I think is the name of that. Mm-hmm. Other one goes over a body of water. So they're all going to be finished by next year as well. So either direction you go. And, and of course, if you're going down Salisbury, the 11 bridge deck project we had going to, to for the last uh, right. year, two years, that's going to be all completed as well. So it's going to be great. And speaking of some of these roads, let's go right into this um, this subject which I think is one of your favorite testosterone in the white-tailed deer oh population, my. which causes? Crashes. Never veer for deer. <laughs> Never veer for deer. So this is the rut, and I'll oh, go yeah. through some background information I have for you on rut. Rut can start as early as the end of September and can last all the way through the winter. Bucks usually begin to start this process when the velvet is falling off their antlers. Apparently, some of this came from Wikipedia, by the way. Uh, they are The male deer has one thing on his mind at this time of year, to find as many does as he yeah. can yeah, they, and they he gets crazy. forgetful about oh, yeah. traffic yep i mean just uh you know take it from a guy who has actually ran into a couple of deer in my life it's a scary experience they just dart out of nowhere but there's some things you can do to try to minimize that risk if you will sometimes it's unavoidable if you're going down an area where there's known deer population you know where you have rural fields woods and, and a body of water where they can feed expect it and then you know you, you got to kind of use your your peripheral vision um and then just slow down through there if you can use high beams if there's nobody coming at you uh because you start to see their eyes right. and if you start seeing one deer there's going to be more they Exa- travel that's in herds. a big deal yeah that's a big deal if you see one deer expect another yeah, one to be and it could be like a another, little bit right. of a delay it yeah. could be a couple seconds later that's how i hit one once i stopped for one thought it was safe to go and i hit one you know and it's that's horrible feeling to hit an animal like that I can't and everything imagine, and, 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 yeah damage and but if, if sometimes it's unavoidable and what can happen in a serious nature of this is a lot of people and it's human instinct you know no i'm not down on anybody for doing this because i actually did to it. turn the wheel and don't do it just you turn the wheel you can end up hitting a pole a curb overturn or you can go head on with somebody at a relatively high speed and then, then you get a more significant crash so we say hey listen um if it's unavoidable you know just hit the animal and never call police don't approach it yeah, never veer for deer and if you have an injured deer call, just call 911 don't try to touch it because an injured animal is dangerous too you know so just be extremely safe out there all right let's take a short break this is donna cole on the 1430 connection we will be right back Welcome back to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. I'm in the studio today with Charlie Gishler. He's the spokesperson for the Maryland State Highway Administration. We're talking highways, our favorite subject. And this was something interesting to me. You don't have a meteorologist on staff, but you have a... A contractor. Now, yeah, for for the listeners out there and web viewers, we we actually hired a consultant, you know, on a contract. Uh, I, I forget the name. I think it's Iteris. But then we also work very closely with the meteorologist from the National Weather Service as a storm approaches. Now, this is how we can use the state's funding in a more effective and efficient way. Uh, Before, people would probably see us just sitting there uh, deployed on the side of the highways. Um, Now we can get with these people with the new technology that's using. And I want to talk about one piece of equipment we have now that we don't have to deploy hours in advance of a storm to err on caution. We can get out there in a more targeted fashion. That saves a lot of money. In order to uh, help the environment, you found, go ahead, in Southern Maryland. Yep. Now, uh, down in Southern Maryland, particularly Charles County, we've been piloting something over the past two winters. It's called liquid-only routes. Okay. What that is, is everybody's heard of brine, salt brine. It's 23% salt, the rest water. We go out and pre-treat with that during certain right. circumstances. If it's going to rain, we can. It'll just wash it off the road. And that's where these meteorologists come in handy. Oh, yeah. They can tell you exactly what's going to happen exactly. as we get closer to Freeze. the storm. And, and you wouldn't believe the technology. And now we can get it down to like an hour, even sooner 
sooner sometimes. Right. Uh, but with this liquid only is, and we've tested it, it's been very successful, is uh, on particular routes, uh, and there's a couple here in Anne Arundel County we can talk about. If conditions weren't, if it's a normal storm, not like a blizzard or something where it's going to be a big snowmaker, but three to five inches, maybe that kind of a storm uh -huh. over the duration, we will use liquid brine only, follow it up with a plow, and we're good to go. Now, how does that save salt, reduce salt usage? Well, the, the liquid, uh, the brine is 23% salt, the rest water. One granule of salt is 100% salt. So uh -huh. over a big period, we can save a lot and reduce salt usage. Which is huge. So you're yeah. going to start deploying this throughout roads in Maryland, yep. not just southern Maryland. No, uh, in fact, it's it's hitting a bunch. Now, out west, um, it's a little different in the mountains. Oh, yeah. It's right. just too cold out yeah. there. But like here in Anne Arundel County, we're going to be uh, doing this on Maryland 10 uh, between Ritchie Highway and the Beltway. Mm -hmm. and it's, I think that's the entire stretch of 10. Uh, also, Dorsey Road, 176 between Abraham Road and Baltimore Napos Boulevard, 648. So those are the two... Uh, liquid only routes that we'll have here in Anne Arundel County. Now you're following a truck, this sounds a little weird, but you're following a truck applying this. Does mm -hmm. this mean your car is going to get covered in brine? That's what you, you got to stay back. Okay. Just, just like a salt truck. Right. You know, you don't want to be right up on them and that don't pass snow plows and equipment, by right. the way, because they're treating the road ahead of you. Uh, it's safer behind. But I always tell people to stay a good two to three car lanes behind at least, okay. uh, if not more. But yeah, I mean, just use common sense out there. I mean, and, and again, it is going to get on the road, this material. Right. It makes good sense to get in there and just maybe wash your car off, uh, you know, after storms, just to, uh, especially the undercarriage and things of that nature. That will help reduce that corrosion risk. I just had a curiosity with climate changing. <laughs> Have we seen less salt usage? And I mean, maybe that's a good indicator that some people don't think about. You know, over the years. Now, a couple of years ago, we had storms, uh, big we had storms. A bunch, yes, we did have some blizzards. And we almost ran out of salt. We I had remember. To, <laughs> we had to get our, and I had to give kudos to our director of maintenance, Russ Urich. He, he mapped it out on the different shops all across the state, and we were able to allocate some resources from Western Maryland or down on the shore where they didn't get as much, and we were able to, to muster through this. But when that when that barge would come up the bay and dump that salt and, and just all the whole East Coast, everybody was trying to get that salt. Is the that local... how it gets delivered, by mm -hmm. barge? Yep. Really? Yep. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, Where's that's... it coming from? I have no idea. It's overseas somewhere. We, you know, there's a couple of different people who so deal in So it gets shipped salt. somewhere to the it United States and then divvied up by uh, onto barges. Yeah, we're trying to get it. The counties are trying to get it. The cities are trying to get it. Other jurisdictions are trying to get it. I so, had no idea. Yeah, okay. so what we do now, yeah, I mean, we've always done this. After storms, we top off just to make sure we have it. Of course, salt doesn't go away. Uh -huh. We have some containment things, too, so it doesn't get wet. And we have these in front of the barns and the domes where it can't leak out. Right. So, so there is a supply of this already on hand from years oh yeah, past. Yeah, so have fact, you seen less usage in recent? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, in fact, last year, now I, I, I got to quantify this too. Okay. Last year, we had up to a 50% reduction of salt. Now people are thinking, oh, we didn't have much of a winter last year, which is true. It was a milder winter. Right. But we don't measure it like that. We measure it on a storm by storm basis. And there were some storms. Uh, in fact, down this way in Southern Maryland and on the shore had that swath. Yeah, yeah, it was I almost remember. like a blizzard. Right. Um, but we were able to use almost uh, half of what we used to use. Now, th it can be variable. We get a bad winter, we're going to use more. Um, but we're trying to do plowing this liquid only work you know and pre-treating all that right. type of thing to help reduce our overall salt usage cool all right we're going to take another break when we come back more about what's happening on our state highways this is donna cole on the 1430 connection we will be right back Welcome back to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. In the studio with me is Charlie Gishler, the Maryland State Highway Administration spokesperson. And we're talking, we're currently uh, talking about winter weather and salt. You, there's another way you're reducing salt usage. It's which a is... really good transition into uh, AI technology. Uh -huh. People might remember we have these pavement temperatures in the interstates in the U.S. where it's like 50 right. and 97. Uh, they used to be embedded in in the pavement that we used to call them hockey pucks. That's what they look like, big hockey pucks. And that would relay pavement temperature and a number of other things, salinity levels. But now we're using the last couple of years, infrared. We have 62 now in our system. We're trying to get up to 100 statewide uh, where it shoots a beam huh. infrared onto that and it can tell things. Now, because of that smart deployment, uh, targeted deployment, last year we saved $11.7 .7 million just because of that technology. So, so I'd say that's economies of scale big time. And infrared light? Yep. And are we gonna, ever going to see this coming down through our windshield? Nope. Never. Nope. It's not seen from the naked eye. No, no, absolutely How not. How cool is and that? It, yeah, it's so cool. And they can tell you what kind of precipitation is on the ground. Is it just wet? Is it icing? Is it getting ready to ice? Is it snow covered? How much of the percentage of salt is on there? Do we need to go out and hit it and then shot it with the liquid brine? Huh. 
So technology. Yep. And speaking of which, oh, yeah. it's artificial intelligence. <laughs> AI is coming to our traffic signals. <laughs> <laughs> These aren't your granddaddy's traffic signals no, anymore. No, they're not. <laughs> so 14 smart signal corridor routes. These are traffic heavy corridors known to back up, known to be problems time to change those signals yep. it's a computer program it's a smart program we tested this and piloted one up on route 24 in the bel air area mm -hmm. in a i mean it's heavy it's been built up these signals if, if you're not timed right or talking to one another it can gridlock you are they all currently timed are they on, some people think oh, they're on wait so if i move forward it'll tr change the signal that's the old way of doing things i think there's still some some loop detectors out there but we're getting rid of them okay. you know what you do is you see the cameras on top of the intersections or nearby and that's aiming at a queue and once it gets to a certain point, it knows to cycle. That's in itself cool. But what these new smart signals will do is uh, they, they talk to one another downstream. So if, if one of them recognizes a bunch of traffic coming off an interstate onto this road, it's going to prepare the side traffic to get out there now. And then it can provide longer green time for the main line, reducing that congestion. I mean, it's amazing what this stuff can do. In fact, that Route 24 corridor, 13% reduction of uh, waiting. Well. Yeah, it doesn't sound like much, but when you're in a car and you can get home 10, 15 minutes faster, it's it's pretty cool. And I, I mean, I think the best is yet to come. This what? technology is evolving. You know, it's not just a concern about us getting home five minutes quicker, 10 minutes quicker. For that, uh, the one I travel every day, Maryland Route 2 from Annapolis Harbor Center to Tarragon Lane, I've seen ambulances stuck. I've seen fire engines stuck. That's bad. That's scary. That's horrible. Keeping traffic moving, that's essential. I mean, in fact, if you want to go to snow routes, if we get one of those storms like we had where it snows five inches an hour, we have to keep a lane open at least for emergency vehicles. It's life or death for some people if they're having some kind of a medical issue. Getting that emergency crew, first responders to and from a hospital and a patient, that's critical. That's, yeah. I mean, all in a, I mean, that's space word in itself. All right, what have I missed? We reached our millionth assist on the roadway. People see our State Farm truck trucks out there. Uh, we assist people either in crashes or disabled or whatever. One million. We we surpassed our one million Amazing. assist out well, there. Thank you for that, helping. And then you know that is incredible in itself. The amount of time it takes to to get somebody out and on their way or you know, assist a disabled vehicle. From, uh -huh. If they're in the travel portion, there's a whole formula of how much backups that can happen. So I uh, saw it yesterday on the Bay Bridge, yeah. uh, eastbound Bay Bridge. And I know the Bay Bridge is not your territory, but yeah. well, uh, but as soon together. as, yeah, but as soon as a disabled vehicle happens on the bridge, <laughs> Route 50, yep. all of Annapolis. All why is it back in the day? Here I go dating myself again. I'm right there with you. Um, <laughs> you would have a flat tire all the time, and today you don't. But when you do have one, you do want the State Highway Administration or somebody. It's scary. For anybody that's ever broken down on a roadway, and you're about to remind me of something real quick, but um, if you're stranded there with high-speed traffic, you know, you're in a car. You don't realize I've what that's happen. like. Right. Uh, I, you know, I brought members of the media to work zones, and they're like, why do I have to wear a hard hat and vest? You know, I'm like, well, look at this speeding by you. So it, it's number one technology for the automobile in terms of tires. You know, you can drive on a flat and some or with a nail right. in your tire for a little bit. Uh, but also with the headlights, you don't need as much highway lighting anymore because the ones we're putting in, we just we're pretty much finished the one where we're so converted all the, the oh, led that's interesting but the halogen headlights you know back in the old days the uh, the headlights were like two battery or two flashlights right. you know now they have angles they can see around curves pretty much and so it's incredible that the led and halogen technology but tire technology too but before we get into the winter this is the time you need to be winterizing your car you don't want to be saved by our people you know try to avoid it in the right. beginning some things that we see, I talk to our people, it, it, you know, you get into the car, you don't realize it, but your hoses, when it gets cold, if there's a problem, it's going to be found when it's cold. You start running out of fluids, antifreeze, you're yeah. going to ruin your engine. And then you're really going to be stuck on the road. You know, make sure your tires are in good shape. There's no nicks. There's the belts, the serpentine belt. Make sure it's not nearing a point where it, it may be for a, you know, a small amount. Right. Relatively, you can, you know, get that replaced and then be good to go if it breaks you're going to do vital dam damage to the engine so winterize your vehicles now Perfect. and don't drive on empty don't drive on empty there's a <laughs> Bad big one fuel pump. especially when you're getting ready to go over the bay bridge <laughs> Tell my daughter don't drive on empty <laughs> <laughs> good point really good point well thanks again for joining sure. me today charlie have a great holiday season coming up you too this is donna cole on the 1430 connection we will see you next week